Hey, I'm Sean, and this is the new ARRI Camera Control Monitor CCM1. The CCM1 is a 7 inch, 1300 nit monitor capable of full camera control on the Alexa Mini LF as well as on the Alexa 35 just using the viewfinder connector. And that kind of opens the door to a new style of rigging where previously you probably had to use an MVF2 in order to adjust your menu settings. Well now you can all do it from the CCM1. So as an operator you can choose your preference for ergonomics either with a viewfinder or with the CCM1 or actually both, which we'll get to in a second. Now the display in here is a really colour accurate display and we have some intuitive touchscreen overlays available so that you can change exposure settings while still looking at a live image, which is nice. We also have a range of user buttons which can control either camera user button functions such as a sensor level punch in which then you won't lose resolution on the monitor when you engage it on a sensor level and you can toggle monitor user button functions as well which you'll be familiar with from other small HD products. Talking of small HD, well this is a collaborative product between ARRI and small HD. We see their monitors on sets all the way around the world and they've been a fantastic development partner. We're really proud to introduce a product which combines the best of the ARRI design ethos and the reliability associated with our brand and Small HD's fantastic suite of monitoring tools and intuitive touchscreen interfaces. All right, let's take a closer look at the monitor. The CCM1 is an all aluminium construction and it feels really solid and robust while also actually being lighter than the MVF2 as well. Now we have a bunch of mounting interfaces. We have one at the top here, one on the right side of the unit and also two at the bottom. And these are all quarter inch mounting interfaces which have two little uh, anti-rotation pin holes here for the ARRI pin lock system. Let's have a look at the connectors. So on the left hand side of the rear of the unit we have the VF connector and the power in connector and these are both located here because they're actually probably closest to where they will be when you have the uh, camera mounted, uh, the monitor mounted to a camera, they'll be closest to that input on the back right hand side of the camera. Now the viewfinder connector is the same that the MVF2 uses, so that port is already available on the Alexa Mini LF and on the Alexa 35 and it uses one of these cables. So this is a 50 centimeter VF cable and this is a really lovely plug that is just one pin and there's no keyway so you can put it in, you know, in any orientation and it'll actually swivel inside the connector as well. We offer this cable in a number of lengths. So this is a 50 centimeter cable and there's also a shorter one, 35 centimeters. There is a 50 centimeter cable with a right angle connector and then longer cables as well. So we actually offer a 10 meter viewfinder connector which we use to have full camera control in the car rig scenario in our launch film. So we had the camera mounted to the bonnet of the car and then ran a 10 meter viewfinder cable down to the back seat for the AC to be able to control everything which was really handy. So that is basically doing vision, camera control and power in through the one cable. So otherwise you'd have to have three. Now there is a slight limitation if you're using this kind of cable as your own cable and that is that you can only run the monitor up to 100 nits peak brightness if you're just using the viewfinder connector. That's basically the REC 709 standard brightness and in studio settings it'll be totally fine but if you do want to go outdoors and use it in direct sunlight then you will need to use an additional power cable and that's where this power input connector comes in. Now this is the same as as the UMC4 or our wireless video system. So it uses a three pin power in and we have a bunch of different three pin power cables available. So this is the RS to RS cable that you will get in the set with the CCM1. But we also have DTAP and two pin LIMO cables available as well. Now the CCM1 supports a voltage range of 10 to 34 volts, so a very wide voltage range, which is great. Next to the power input we have the SDI connection. So you can use this monitor as just a regular 7 inch onboard monitor. You don't have to use the viewfinder connector. It might be handy if you're an AC and need to use one you know, with a high five in a pinch or put it in a director's cage for a director on, a, on location. So that's a 3G SDI input and we also have a second input over here which you can toggle as a loop out. Now at the moment that will only work, the loop out will only work with 
uh, as a loop out for the SDI input over here. Um, so just bear that in mind. But you can have two separate SDI sources and the viewfinder connector plugged in and then toggle between them all if you like. Headphone connector is next and you will have access to all of the normal routing options for your audio signals that are in the camera menu. So that's where you adjust your headphone output. And then next to it, we have a new connector. Now this is USB on a five pin Lemo connector and there will be a USB to ethernet adapter available for situations where you would want to use the CCM1 on an Alexa Mini LF and you also have an MVF2 viewfinder connected because there's only one viewfinder connector on that camera. But in that case, you could use the USB with ethernet and power and SDI in to give you access to some camera control functionality, mainly the status components overlay with the interactivity there that we'll get to in a second. The other connector on the back here is under this rubber flap. At the top of the monitor, you'll find a USB-C connector. And this cavity has been designed so that you can leave the USB drive that you get with an Alexa 35, so that's USB and USB-A, it will sit in there while the rubber cover is closed and keep it nice and safe and sound. So you can use that for updating the device as well as storing frame grabs and importing a number of things like look files or frame lines. The other nice thing on the back of the monitor here is that there are accessory mounting holes. So we have four M3 holes here at the back, which have been designed to accommodate a number of third-party micro battery plates. So here's one that I prepared earlier. So this is a B-Bob plate, but Anton Bauer plates will also fit as well. And this can be really handy when you need to power the monitor you know, at a distance from where the camera is. So when we did our car rig shot, we have a long 10 meter viewfinder connector, and then we had a little battery on the back of the monitor providing power so that we could get that extra brightness. And that just attaches there. You can use say a DTAP to RSN power cable with that little battery plate. Now at the top of the monitor on the back side still we have our power button and then we also have a back button and a joystick next to that. Now you can use the joystick and the back button to interact with all of the menus of the CCM1 or you can use touchscreen. There's no compromise between using touch or the joystick. Just below that we have a little lock button and this will lock all control inputs. So it will lock the touchscreen, it will lock the clickable joystick and it will lock the user buttons which are on the side here. Now these are on the left side of the CCM1 so that they're you know quite ergonomic to adjust when you have the you're standing on the left side of the camera obviously you use your left hand on the monitor. We have a dedicated M button for the camera menu and then we have user buttons 1, 2 and 3 and 4 which can be user defined either in the camera or on the monitor itself and to show you how you do that we better go put it on a camera. All right, let's attach it to a camera. Now to do that, we've got this new monitor arm. This is the Mac one or monitor arm for camera. And it attaches to my top handle with a 3 8 inch screw, which of course has those standard ARRI pin locks for non-rotation here. So it won't undo by itself. Now the pin lock system is also featured up the top here where we have a quarter inch screw and pin lock on quarter inch, well that's kind of new. And that's because we've just released a new standard for pin lock on both sizes of screws that we normally use in the camera department. And that standard is freely available to other accessory manufacturers as we would love to see everyone adopt one system for that. I think it'll really help out with interoperability between camera accessories. Now the Mac one's pretty cool. So it's a two axis monitor arm, which means that I have adjustment over tilt and I have adjustment over pan. I don't get rotation you know, in this axis, but that's kind of okay because you don't really want the monitor to have a different level of horizon to your camera sensor. So it's two axis. And as you might've just noticed, you can adjust the whole thing with one hand and it will sit where you leave it because it uses a friction based system. And I have these two little knobs here for adjusting that. So I can find a nice level of friction and then it will stay wherever I leave it. That's a lot easier than some other monitor arms, especially if you're trying to adjust it by yourself in handheld mode, you know, you end up looking like this and it's really awkward. So the Mac one is really nice. Let's plug it in. So we need a viewfinder connector and that would be of course this standard yellow cable here. Again, if you haven't used the viewfinder connector before, it's fantastic. There's no keyway, it's just one pin. You can even rotate the cable in the socket, really easy to connect. Now that will give me 100 nits of 
brightness. And if I want a brighter image, well, I have to also use a second cable. So here I have my RS to RS cable, which plugs in next to the viewfinder connector. And again, there are a lot of different kinds of RS power cable cables available. So this gives me a nice 1300 nits of brightness, which is great for operating in sunlight. It's definitely a daylight viewable monitor. Now, it's not an HDR monitor, it's just a very bright SDR monitor. And if you need HDR monitoring on set, then I highly recommend checking out the MVF2 as it's set up for that and it's a really accurate HDR monitor and a reliable and trustworthy tool. Now, reliable and trustworthy is kind of important. I think that's something that cinematographers have definitely come to expect from our monitoring devices. And I think the same is of the CCM1. We have custom ARRI color management going on for this device. And I really think you'll like it when you get to try it out. All right, next. Let's say that you're outside and it's really bright and maybe it's just a bit too bright. It's really glary. You're in the middle of the outback perhaps. Well, you need a sun hood. And this little guy is pretty cool. So this is our new sun hood and all it does to attach is I slip it over the back there and clip at the bottom. No Velcros or straps or anything like that. And as you can see here, it's kind of like an iPad. So we have these little kind of levered leatherette finish outside parts. They're kind of both soft and stiff at the same time. And if I swing out my little side flaps here, you'll hear that they snap together with magnets. And then I have this little locking bit that goes underneath. So this is a nice, you know, solid and secure sun hood, which I think is pretty cool. Inside we have a microfiber lining to stop glare and reflections. And also of course, that's the bit that sits on top of the monitor. So it will keep it safe. And talking about keeping it safe, well, of course, this is a great little way to close your monitor very quickly if you need to stuff it into an onset bag, or even if it's just sitting against the top handle here. For more protection, well, the CCM1 ships with a screen protector and we have packs of three available of those screen protectors should you need to replace one down the line. On top of that, you also get this little pouch, which has been designed so that it will sit over the monitor with the Mac one and the cables attached so that you can put it like this if you need to quickly change locations. Well, what else do you get? So you get a 50 centimeter viewfinder cable. You get an RS to RS power cable. You of course get the monitor, the Mac one, the screen protector, the sun hood and the pouch all available in one set for you to purchase. One other little thing, you might've noticed that these are not the usual mini LF accessories. And this is of course the lightweight camera handle that we introduced with the Alexa 35. And we've now made that work with the mini LF thanks to the new map four plate. I also have a CSP2 on the bottom here. And that is also an Alexa 35 plate. So now all of the base plates for the Alexa 35 will work with the mini LF thanks to the Bud 3 down here. And we have a whole nother tech talk on those new accessories for the mini LF. So go and check it out. All right, let's have a look at the Alexa 35. CCM1 on an Alexa 35. Now, when we launched this camera, a few people asked us what the second viewfinder connector was for. And while I can plug the MVF2 into either connector, which certainly helps in some rigging scenarios, it wasn't actually designed with two viewfinders in mind. Instead, it was designed for the CCM1. And the real benefit of that, apart from getting to use this wonderful monitor, is that when I have the viewfinder connector here plugged into the CCM1, I'm no longer using an SDI output for my onboard, onboard monitor. So now I have two 12G SDI outputs that can be used for transmitters or other monitors or whatever you like. Now I'm gonna run you through a bit of the software here and show you how the camera control side of things works. And to do that, I'm just gonna pull off the sun hood, which you do by unclipping the two bottom corners here and then lifting off. And here we have the live image. And this is very similar to what you would find on a normal SDI monitor, only that now the status components, which are around the display, well, the top line of those, they're now interactive. So I can click on my white balance indicator, for example, and then I'll get a list on the right-hand side where I can choose from a new white balance value and then press set. And the benefit of that is that I can now see the live image changing in real time, which you can't really do with the flip out display on the MVF2. If I swipe left from the live image, I'll be greeted with the home screen, 
which of course is very familiar to many of you and it's very similar to the layout that is on the flip out display here of the MVF2. These are again interactive components so I can click on my exposure index value. Again, I get a list of possible uh, new exposure indexes to set and then I press set to make the change. Now, the other nice thing which we have on this uh, home screen here is that it will give you an indicator of what the user buttons are set to. If you swipe left from the home screen, it'll take you to the small HD menu, which is where you can set up the monitor and select your inputs and also change the monitor brightness amongst a whole bunch of other settings. And they're basically the three default home screens that you have. So you have the small HD menu, and then you have the home screen, and then you have the live image display with those interactive status components. If you swipe to the right once more, you'll be greeted with the traditional small HD page builder OS. And that's where you can basically take any live image and customize it with a variety of monitoring tools. You add those by tapping on the screen and pressing the plus button there at the top left. So things like a vector scope or peaking, you can do whatever you like and it's pretty much exactly the same as you would find it on other flagship small HD products. Now, if you swipe down, you'll be taken into a screen where you can see all of those pages and there is a little playback icon in the top center of the display. So here I get my full playback controls down the bottom. I also get some playback options and I get a clip list, which is nice. So the clip list will show me obviously all the clips on my card, including a bit of metadata, which can be helpful to identify the one that you'd like to play back. And when you're finished in playback, you can close playback at the bottom left, which will take you back to the pages overview. Now, what about the camera menu? Well, we have a dedicated hardware button for the camera menu, which is this top button on the left hand side, just above the user buttons. And it will be quite familiar to those of you who've used a mini or a mirror before, because it's the same style of M button. And when you press that, well, you're greeted with the standard camera menu. Now I can interact with the menu here with touch, or I can scroll through with the joystick on the back. And let's say I wanna set up a user button. Well, I can click through with the joystick and you'll notice that there is a new monitor user buttons section of the user buttons menu. And this is one way that I can customize the functions for these four user buttons that are under the M button. But there's another way to do that as well. So if I exit the menu by pressing the M button again, I can long press on any of the user buttons to be taken to the small HD side of the user button menu. But I can also set my camera user buttons here as well. So at the moment it's on the monitor page and you can see that I have these three categories, shortcuts, tools and config, which are all to do with the monitor settings that I can set to a user button. So for example, in the config over here, we selected uh, one of our user buttons to be an SDI input on when we were shooting our launch film for the CCM1 so that the DP could easily flick between their own image and the B camera. If you'd prefer them to be camera user buttons, well, you can press on camera at the top there and then you get operation, SDI and VF as categories for functions that you can again assign to these user buttons. One thing to mention is firmware. So the Alexa 35 and the Alexa Mini LF will both require software updates in order to support the CCM1 and the Alexa 35 will come a little bit earlier than the Alexa Mini LF, but both will be very close to the launch of this product. All right, go and check out the launch video if you haven't seen it already. There's more information on our webpage. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. We'll see you at the next one.